Greetings, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome again to another uh, edition of History and Truth. Today we are back at the Yokohama Commonwealth War Cemetery to once again commemorate the Battle of Hong Kong and in memory of the fallen buried here. These people who were buried here were prisoners captured after the fall of Hong Kong. This graveyard were those who died in Japan in slave labor camps from Britain. Over there is the Australian grave behind those trees and behind that set of trees is the Canadian grave where 137 Canadian soldiers are uh, buried. Above us on the hill over there is the grave site for those who died in the Korean War conflict, who died in hospitals here in Japan. Today, we are not actually joined by anyone. <laughs> okay, the uh, groundskeeper retired in November, so Mr. Kobayashi is no longer here. Okay, the Battle of Hong Kong, 8th to 25th December 1941, also known as the Defense of Hong Kong and the Fall of Hong Kong, was one of the first battles of the Pacific War in World War II. On the same morning as the attack on Pearl Harbor, forces of the Empire of Japan attacked the British Crown Colony of Hong Kong. The attack was in violation of international law as Japan had not declared war against the British Empire. The Hong Kong garrison consisted of British, Indian and Canadian units, besides Chinese soldiers and conscripts from both within and outside Hong Kong. Locations which played an important role in setting this pace of military operations during December 1941 include Tai Po Road, the Xing Mun Redoubt Trench, and Tunnel Complex in the Gin Drinkers Line, Devil's Peak, Ma Lao Tong, Lai Mun, also spelt as Lai Mun or Lei Yui Mun, North Point, Aldrich Bay, also known as Quarry Bay, Chao Kiwan, Saiwan Hill, Wong Nei Chong Gap, the Wong Nei Chong Gap, Tai Tan, Tai Tan Gap and Reservoirs, Shoshon Hill, and Stanley Ford. Coastal defense batteries, including those at Stonecutters Island, Pak Sha Wan, Laimon Fort, Sai Wan, Mount Collinson, Mount Parker, Belchers, Mount Davis, Jubilee Hill, Pokhara, and Stanley provided artillery support for ground operations till they were put out of action or surrendered. Within a week, the defenders abandoned the mainland, and less than two weeks later, their position on the island untenable. The colony had raised the white flag of surrender. Background. Britain's first thought of Japan as a threat with the ending of the Anglo-Japanese alliance in the early 1920s, a threat that increased with the escalation of the Second Sino-Japanese War. On 21st October 1938, the Japanese occupied Canton, Guangzhou, and Hong Kong was surrounded. British defense studies concluded that Hong Kong would be extremely hard to defend in the event of a Japanese attack. But in the mid-1930s, work began on improvements to defenses, including along the Gin Drinkers Line, and by 1940, the British determined to reduce the Hong Kong garrison to only a symbolic size. Air Chief Marshal, Marshal Sir Robert Brooke Popham, the Commander-in-Chief of the British Far East Command, argued that limited reinforcements could allow the garrison to delay a Japanese attack, gaining time elsewhere. Winston Churchill and the General Staff named Hong Kong as an outpost and decided against sending more troops. 
In September 1941, they reversed their decision and argued that additional reinforcements would provide a military deterrent against the Japanese and reassured Chinese leader Chiang Kai-shek that Britain was serious about defending the colony. Strengths of all personnel mobilized at Hong Kong garrison on 8 December 1941. British, 3,652. 3, Local colonial, 2,428. Indian, 2,254. Auxiliary defense units, 2,112. Hong Kong Voluntary Defense Corps, 2,000. Canadian, 1,982, and a nursing detachment of 136, for a total of 14,564 personnel. Contemporary research and literature about the Battle of Hong Kong is overbearingly focused on the British and Canadian military, leaving the Chinese and Indian war narratives almost entirely untold. According to the History Manual of the United States Military Academy, Japanese control of Canton, Hainan Island, French Indochina, and Formosa virtually sealed the fate of Hong Kong well before the firing of the first shot. British military in Hong Kong grossly underestimated the capabilities of Japanese forces and downplayed the Japanese threat as unpatriotic and insubordinate. U.S. Consul Robert Ward, the highest ranking U.S. official posted to Hong Kong in the period preceding the outbreak of hostilities, offered a first-hand explanation for the rapid collapse of defenses in Hong Kong by saying the local British community had insufficiently prepared itself for the Chinese populace for war. Besides highlighting the prejudiced attitudes held by those governing the Crown Colony of Hong Kong, several of them the British rulers, said frankly that they would rather turn the island over to the Japanese rather than to turn it over to the Chinese, by which they meant rather than employ Chinese to defend the colony, they would surrender it to the Japanese. According to U.S. Consul Robert Ward, when the real fighting came, it was the British soldiery that broke and ran. The Eurasians fought well, and so did the Indians but the Kowloon line broke and the Royal Scots gave way. The same thing happened on the mainland. Colonel Reynolds Condon, a U.S. Army Assistant Military Attaché who witnessed the battle and was taken prisoner by the Japanese, wrote up in his observations on military preparedness before the commencement of hostilities and also the execution of operations thereafter. The Indian Army. During World War II, soldiers of the Indian Army were involved in the Battle of Hong Kong. The 5th Battalion, 7th Rajput Regiment, took up garrison at Hong Kong in June 1937, followed by the 2nd Battalion, 14th Punjab, in November 1940. The Indian troops were also incorporated with several overseas regiments, as for example, the Hong Kong Singapore Royal Artillery Regiment, which had Indian or Sikh gunners. Hong Kong Mule Corps was almost entirely staffed by Douglas and Pujami Muslims. Medical personnel from the Indian Medical Service tended to those injured in combat. Ex servicemen from India serving as security guards in Hong Kong also suffered appallingly huge casualties. Two of the three battalions stationed at the Jin Rikers Line were from the Indian Army, the 2nd Battalion 14th, uh, of the 14th Battalion Punjab Regiment in the center section and the 5th 7th Battalion Rajput Regiment in the eastern sector. The 2nd Battalion Royal Scots were assigned to the western sector. When mainland infantry brigade was ordered to retreat to Hong Kong Island, the Rajputs were tasked with defending the northeast sector and Pujab to the northwest sector, including Victoria City, Hong Kong City, and the Royal Scots were assigned to the Wan Chai filter beds. 
Details regarding the involvement of military personnel from the Indian subcontinent in the Battle of Hong Kong has been published in Official History of the Indian Armed Forces in the Second World War, 1939-45. Campaigns in Southeast Asia, 1941-42. Hong Kong, Malaya, and Sarawak and Borneo. Withdraw significantly, significantly from the UK War Office reports, which appeared in London Gazette, number 38183. Operations in the Far East from 17th October 1940 to 27th December 1941. Dispatched by Air Chief Marshal Sir Robert Brooke Popham, Commander in Chief, Far East. And London Gazette, 38190. Operations in Hong Kong from 8th to 25th December 1941. Dispatched by Major General C. M. Maltby, General Officer Commanding British Troops in China. Battalions from both Indian Army regiments from the British Raj earned battle honors for the defense of Hong Kong. 5th Battalion of 7th Rajput Regiment and the 2nd Battalion of the 14th Punjab Regiment saw combat during the Japanese assault on Kowloon Peninsula. Kaipo Road, Xing Mung Redoubt, Mao Long Tong, and Devil's Peak, and Hong Kong Island at Laimon, North Point, Cory Bay, Sai Wan, Leighton Hill, Shoson Hill, Brick Hill, Wan Chai, Happy Valley, Wong Ne Chong Gap, and Mount Terish. First significant exchanges of fire with troops of the Imperial Japanese Army was through 2nd 14th Punjab at 1500 hours after the invaders had crossed into Laffin's Plain. On 8th of December 1941, forward troops of the 2nd Punjab, 2nd 14th Punjab, drew first blood by eliminating a detachment at 1830 hours and virtually wiped out a Japanese platoon on Tai Po Road at 1930 hours. During the Battle of Hong Kong, the 5th 7th Rajputs faced the onslaught of Imperial Japanese Army troops very early on and were the last soldiers to depart from the mainland when Kowloon was evacuated on 13th December 1941. At the beginning of the Pacific War, 5th 7th Rajput was tasked with front-line defense of the eastern section of the Jin Drinkers Line on mainland Kowloon Peninsula. Despite being subjected to dive bombing and heavy mortar fire, the Rajputs succeeded in holding Devil's Peak on the mainland until ordered to retreat across Laimun Strait to Hong Kong Island. On Hong Kong Island, they were assigned to defenses located all along the North Shoreline. On 18th December 1941, the Imperial Japanese Army launched the invasion of Hong Kong Island by landing first at North Point. The first troops to engage them were the Rajputs who continued to offer resistance until the regiment virtually ceased to exist. In his dispatch, Major General C. M. Maltby wrote about the conduct of troops under his command in Hong Kong and mentions the 5th 7th Rajput Regiment. This battalion fought well on the mainland and the repulse of the enemy attack on Devil's Peak was entirely successful. The full force of the enemy's initial attack on the island fell on this battalion and they fought gallantly until they had suffered heavy casualties, 100% of the British officers and most senior Indian officers being lost and were run over. The numerical composition and outcome of the two Indian Army regiments, the 5th 7th Rajput and the 2nd 14th Punjab, involved in the defense of Hong Kong are published in Major General C. M. Maltby's War Dispatch. London Gazette, number 38190, which also notes that many of the wounded of 5th 7th Regiment Regiment fell into Japanese hands and have not been recorded. Total battle casualties of Indian other ranks is given to be 1,164 out of a total of 3,893 military personnel from India who are garrisoned in Hong Kong. The 5th 7th Rajput bore the heaviest casualty losses recorded among the 6th Combat Regiments during the Battle of Hong Kong. 
156 killed in action or died from wounds, 113 missing, and 193 wounded. The 2nd 14th Punjab of the Indian Army also bore heavy losses, 55 killed in action or died from wounds, 69 missing, and 161 wounded. The Hong Kong and Singapore Royal Artillery Hong Kong and Singapore Royal Artillery, which was raised with troops recruited from undivided India, also suffered heavy casualties during the Battle of Hong Kong and are commemorated with names inscribed on panels at the entrance to Sai Wan War Cemetery. 144 killed, 45 missing, and 103 wounded. Sea Force in late 1941, the British government accepted an offer by the Canadian government to send a battalion of the Royal Rifles of Canada from Quebec and one of the Winnipeg Grenadiers from Manitoba and a brigade headquarters, altogether 1,975 personnel, to reinforce the Hong Kong garrison. Here they are on the way. Sea Force, as it was known, arrived on 16th November on board the troop ship Awatea and the armed merchant cruiser HMCS Prince David. A total of 96 officers, two auxiliary services, services supervisors, and 1,877 other ranks disembarked. Included were two medical officers and two nurses, supernumerary to the regimental medical officers. Two Canadian Dental Corps officers with assistance, three chaplains, and a detachment of the Canadian Postal Corps. A soldier of the Royal Canadian Army Medical Corps, RCAMC, had stowed away and was sent back to Canada. Sea Force never received its vehicles as the U.S. merchant ship San Jose carrying them was, at the outbreak of the Pacific War, diverted to Manila in the Philippine Islands at the request of the U.S. government. The Royal Rifles had served only in the Dominion of Newfoundland and St. John, New Brunswick, prior to posting to Hong Kong, and the Winnipeg Grenadiers had been deployed to Jamaica. Few Canadian soldiers had field experience, but were nearly fully equipped, except for having only two anti-tank rifles, and no ammunition for two-inch and three-inch mortars, or for signal pistols, deficiencies which the British undertook to remedy in Hong Kong, although not at once. Royal Marines. During the Battle of Hong Kong, there were 40 Royal Marines attached in HMS Tamar. When the battle began, the Royal Marines fought against Japanese force in Magazine Gap alongside with the Hong Kong Volunteer DC and the Royal Engineers. Commanding Officer Major Giles, Giles R.M. instructed his men to defend the island to the last man and the last round. Other forces. The Chinese military mission to Hong Kong, initiated in 1938, was headed by Rear Admiral Chan Chuck and his aide, Lieutenant Commander Henry Xiu. It had the objective of coordinating Chinese war aims with the British in Hong Kong. Working with the British police, Chuck organized pro-British agents among the population and rooted out triad factions sympathetic to the Japanese. On Christmas morning, Young informed Chuck of his intent to surrender. Chuck intended to break out and was given command of the five remaining motor torpedo boats, 68 men, including Chuck, Xu, and David Mercer MacDougall, MacDougall were successfully evacuated to Mears Bay where they contacted communist guerrillas and were escorted to Huzhou. 
For this feat, Chuck was made an honorary Knight Commander of the Order of the British Empire. A squad of free French under Captain Jacques Egal happened to be in Hong Kong when the battle broke out and fought alongside the HKVDC at the North Point Power Station. They were all World War I veterans, as were the local HKVDC, and acquitted themselves well. The Battle, 8th December 1941. Here's a picture of Japanese artillery firing at Hong Kong. Here's a picture of Canadian infantry in Hong Kong with a Bren gun. The Japanese attack began shortly after 0800 on 8th December 1941, Hong Kong time. Four hours after the attack on Pearl Harbor. Difference in time and date is due to the day shift that occurs because of the international date line. Commanded by Major General Christopher Maltby, British, Canadian, Indian, as well as the local Hong Kong Chinese Regiment and the Hong Kong Volunteer Defense Corps resisted the Japanese attack by the Japanese 21st, 23rd, and 38th Regiments, Lieutenant General Takashi Sakai, but were outnumbered nearly four to one. Japanese 50,000, Allied 14,000. I lacked their opponent's recent combat experience. The colony had no significant air defense. The RAF station at Hong Kong's Kai Tak Airport, or RAF Kai Tak, had only five aeroplanes two Supermarine Walrus amphibious aircraft and three Vickers Wildebeest torpedo reconnaissance bombers, flown and serviced by seven officers and 108 airmen. An earlier request for a fighter squadron had been rejected, and the nearest fully operational RAF base was in Kotabaru, Malaya, nearly 2,250 kilometers or 1,400 miles away. Hong Kong also lacked adequate naval defenses. Three destroyers were to withdraw to Singapore Naval Base. Kowloon and the New Territories. The Japanese bombed Kai Tak Airport on 8th December. Two of the three Wildebeest and the two walruses were destroyed by 12 Japanese bombers. The attack also destroyed several civil aircraft including all but two of the aircraft used by the air unit of the Hong Kong Volunteer Defense Corps. The RAF and air unit personnel from then fought on as ground troops. Two of the Royal Navy's three remaining destroyers were ordered to leave Hong Kong for Singapore. Only one destroyer, HMS Thracian, several gunboats and a flotilla of motor torpedo boats remained. On 8th 9th and 10th December, eight American pilots of the China National Aviation Corporation, the CNAC, and their crews flew 16 sorties between Kai Tak Airport and landing fields in Namyong and Chongqing, or Chongqing, the wartime capital of the Republic of China. The crews evacuated 275 persons from Madame Sun yat -sien, the widow of Sun Yat-sen, and the Chinese finance minister, Kang Xiong Hai. The Commonwealth forces decided against holding the Shan Chung River and instead established three battalions on the Jin Drinkers Line across the hills. The Japanese 38th Infantry Division, under the command of Major General Takeshi Sakai, quickly forded the Shan Chung River over temporary bridges. Early on 10th December, the 228th Infantry Regiment under Colonel Heihichi of the 38th Division attacked the Commonwealth forces at Shingmon Ridao, defended by A Company of the 2nd Battalion Royal Scots under Lieutenant Colonel S. White. The line was breached in five hours and later that day the Royal Scots also withdrew 
from Golden Hill until D Company of the Royal Scots counterattacked and recaptured the hill. By 10 o'clock, the hill was again taken by the Japanese. This made the situation on the new territories and Kowloon untenable, and the evacuation to Hong Kong Island started on 11th December under aerial bombardment and artillery fire. As much as possible, military and harbor facilities were demolished before the withdrawal. By 13th December, the 5th 7th Rajputs of the Indian Army under Lieutenant Colonel R. Cadogan Rawlinson, the last Commonwealth troops on the mainland, had retreated to Hong Kong Island. Hong Kong Island. Here is a picture of Japanese troops at Sim Sha Tsui. Maltby organized the defense of the island, splitting it between an East Brigade and a West Brigade. On 15th December, the Japanese began systematic bombardment of the island's north shore. Two demands for surrender were made on 13th and 17th December. When these were rejected, Japanese forces crossed the harbor on the evening of 18th December and landed on the island's northeast. They suffered only light casualties, although no effective command could be maintained until the dawn came. That night, approximately 20 Commonwealth gunners were executed at the Saiwan Battery, despite having surrendered. There was a further massacre of prisoners, this time of medical staff, in the Silesian Mission on Chan Wan Road. In both cases, a few men survived. On the morning of 19th December, fierce fighting continued on Hong Kong Island, but the Japanese annihilated the headquarters of West Brigade, causing the death of Brigadier John Lawson, the commander of the West Brigade. A British counterattack could not force them from the Wong Nai Chung Gap that secured the passage between the north coast of Causeway Bay and the secluded southern parts of the island. From 20th December, the island became split in two, with the British Commonwealth forces still holding out around the Stanley Peninsula and in the west of the island. At the same time, water supplies started to run short as the Japanese captured the island's reservoirs. On the morning of 25th December, Japanese soldiers entered the British Field Hospital at St. Stephen's College and in the St. Stephen's College incident tortured and killed a large number of injured soldiers along with the medical staff. By the afternoon of 25th December 1941, it was clear that further resistance would be futile and British colonial officials headed by the Governor of Hong Kong, Sir Mark Aitchison Young, surrendered in person at the Japanese headquarters on the third floor of the Peninsula Hong Kong Hotel. This was the first occasion on which a British Crown Colony had surrendered to an invading force. British Somaliland fell to the Italians in August 1940, but this was a protectorate. The garrison had held out for 17 days. This day is known in Hong Kong as Black Christmas. Massacres. Saiwan Hill. Perhaps as many as 28 people were massacred after the fight for Saiwan Hill. These men were members of the 5th Anti-Aircraft Battery of the Hong Kong Volunteer Force Defense Corps. A Silesian Mission. At Shao K-1, there was a Silesian Mission being used as an advanced dressing station. On the night of 18th December, it was surrounded by troops of the 229th Infantry Regiment. At 0700, on 19th December, Captain Martin Banfield of the Canadian Medical Corps surrendered the station. Two injured officers of the 7th Rajput Regiment were murdered upon arrival in an ambulance. The Japanese separated the male medical staff from the female, who were two nurses whose lives were spared. All but three of the men were killed, most of the victims were of the Royal Army Medical Corps, but also of at least two men of the Royal Rifles of Canada and 
two civilians. Causeway Bay. Three captured persons were executed at Causeway Bay, including a female air raid warden with the local air raid precautions. Wong Nai Chung Gap. At Wong Nai Chung Gap, 10 men of the St. John Ambulance were killed, as well as a policeman and a medic. Jardine's Lookout. Four men each of the 3rd Company HKVDC and the Winnipeg Grenadiers were massacred after battle at Jardine's Lookout. One Grenadier, a Private Kilfoyle, was killed on the force marched to North Point, according to witnesses. The Black Hole of Hong Kong Four men were killed in the so-called Black Hole of Hong Kong, which is a house on Blue Pool Road, including two Canadian officers. Blue Pool Road. Around 30 civilians of different ethnicities were massacred at Blue Pool Road. The Ridge, Overbays, and Eucliff. And the worst massacre of POWs of the battle, the Japanese killed at least 47 after taking the Ridge. Among the dead was Major Charles Sidney Clark of the Chinese Command Headquarters. Two men of the 12th and 20th Coastal Regiments of the Royal Artillery, six men of the Royal Army Service Corps, and two of the Royal Canadian Army Service Corps, 19 men of the Royal Army Ordnance Corps, and three of the Royal Canadian Ordnance Corps, and 14 men of the RASC Company of the HKVDC. The Japanese also executed at least 14 captives at Overbase, men of the same units as the Ridge, but also including three Royal Rifles of Canada and an officer of the 1st Battalion, Middlesex Regiment. A further seven were killed at Eucliffe, and another 36 known as victims cannot be placed precisely at one of the three locations, Ridge, Overbays, or Eucliffe. Ride, who was present at the surrender, stated that he saw 50 bodies lying by the road, including six Middlesex men among them. These men may have been some of those attached to the Hong Kong Chinese Regiment. The Commonwealth War Graves Commission report also states that five men of the Royal Air Force went missing near the ridge on 20th of December, perhaps captured and killed. Deepwater Bay Ride. Six men of the Middlesex were killed defending a pill pillbox, pillbox number 14, at Deepwater Bay Ride which is now Lion Light. In, it is uncertain whether they were killed in action or murdered after capture. St. Stephen's College. The massacre perpetrated at St. Stephen's College is the least well known. Only 13 victims can be confirmed at the location, but reports and estimates put the real number as high as 99. The names of all the reported victims may never be known. Between 75 and 150 bodies were cremated by the victors in the aftermath of the battle, but this total includes the victims of the fighting around Stanley Fork, such as the men of the 965th Defense Battery. Although it is the most infamous massacre, it has been the hardest to match with records. Three British and four Chinese nurses were said to have been raped and murdered, and one Canadian Captain Overton Stark Hickey of the RCASC murdered, trying to stop the rapes. Besides the rape nurses, the medical staff suffered two deaths, a doctor shot in the head while attempting escape, and 25 orderlies of the Indian Hospital Corps and St. John Ambulance personnel. The 55 St. John victims of the Battle of Hong Kong are memorialized at the present headquarters in Hong Kong but since no dates are given on the memorial, it is impossible to identify those killed at St. Stephen's. Four Chinese servants and one civilian, Tam Chung Hong, were killed. Tam is the only Chinese victim of this massacre known by name. Among the soldiers receiving treatment at the college, two riflemen were mutilated and murdered, and a further 56 men were reportedly bayoneted in their beds. 
Some of these men may have been loyal rifles whose deaths are incorrectly reported as occurring elsewhere on 26 December. Mary Knoll Mission. At least eight men, six of the Middlesex and two Royal Engineers, were killed after capture at Mary Knoll Mission. Four members of the 8th Coastal Regiment, RA, may have been killed here as well. Estimates of the number of men murdered vary from 11 to 16. Brick Hill. 26 prisoners are believed to have been killed after the fighting for Brick Hill, but some of these may have died in the fight, including some of the 17 men of the heavy anti-aircraft Hong Kong and Singapore Royal Artillery, known to have died there. Most of the soldiers here murdered were Muslims, including one religious teacher. The aftermath. Casualties. The Japanese had at least 1,895 men killed of an estimated 6,000 casualties. Allied casualties were 1,111 men killed, 1,167 missing, and 1,362 wounded. Allied dead, including British, Canadian, and Indian soldiers, were eventually interred at Sai Wan Military Cemetery and the Stanley Military Cemetery. Sea Force casualties in the battle were 23 officers and 267 other ranks killed or died of wounds, including five officers and 16 other ranks of the brigade headquarters, seven officers and 123 men of the Royal Rifles, and 11 officers and 128 men of the Winnipeg Grenadiers. Sea Force also had 28 officers and 465 men wounded. Some of the dead were murdered by Japanese soldiers during or after surrender. Japanese soldiers committed a number of atrocities on 19 December when the aid post at Salesian Mission near Sao Ki Wan was overrun. A total of 1,528 soldiers, mainly Commonwealth, predominantly Indians, Canadians, are either buried or commemorated there. There are also graves of other Allied combatants who died in the region during the war, including some Dutch sailors who were reinterred in Hong Kong after the war. The nearby Saiwan Battery, with buildings constructed as far back as 1890, housed the depot and record office of the Hong Kong Military Service Corps for nearly four decades after the war. The barracks were handed over to the government in 1985 and were subsequently converted into Le Yue Moon Park and Holiday Village. At the end of February 1942, the Japanese government stated that numbers of prisoners of war in Hong Kong were British, 5,072, Canadian, 1,689, Indian, 3,829, others, 357, a total of 10,947. They were sent to Cham Shui Pio Cham Shui Po POW Camp, Argyle Street Camp for officers, North Point Camp primarily for Canadians and Royal Navy, Ma Tao Chung Camp for Indian soldiers, Yokohama Camp in Japan, Fukuoka Camp in Japan, and Osaka Camp in Japan. Of the Canadians captured during the battle, 267 subsequently perished in Japanese prisoner of war camps, mainly due to neglect and abuse. In December 2011, Toshiyuki Kato, Japan's parliamentary vice minister for foreign affairs, apologized for the mistreatment to a group of Canadian veterans of the Battle of Hong Kong. Enemy civilians, meaning Allied nationals, were interned at the Stanley internment camp. Initially, there were 2,400 internees, although this number was reduced by repatriations during the war. Interned persons who died and prisoners executed by the Japanese are buried in Stanley Military Cemetery. Subsequent operations. Here are, is a picture of the Dongjiang guerrillas 
fighting in trenches. Isagai Renske became the first Japanese governor of Hong Kong. This ushered in the three years and eight months of imperial Japanese administration. During the three and a half years of occupation by the Japanese, an estimated 10,000 Hong Kong civilians were executed, while many others were tortured, raped, or mutilated. The local population in the rural New Territories, a mix of Hakka, Cantonese, and other Han Chinese groups, waged a guerrilla war with limited success. The resistance groups were known as the Gangju and the Dongjian forces. The Japanese raised several villages in reprisal. The guerrillas fought until the end of the Japanese occupation. General Takeshi Sakai, who led the invasion of Hong Kong and served as governor for some time, was tried as a war criminal and executed by firing squad. Awards. There is a statue of an anonymous World War I soldier from statuary collection at Yu Tong Sen. Also visible is the Battle of Hong Kong Memorial plaque dedicated to all the defenders of Hong Kong in December 1941 through John Robert Osborne. Here's a picture of Sergeant Major Osborne. Memorial plaque dedicated to the defenders of Hong Kong in December 1941 through John Robert Osborne and to commemorate the British garrison at Hong Kong. John Robert Osborne, born 2nd January 1899 and died 19th December 1941, was awarded the Victoria Cross after seeing a Japanese grenade roll in through the doorway of the building Osborne and his fellow Canadian Winnipeg Grenadiers had been garrisoning. garrisoning. He took off his helmet and threw himself on the grenade, saving the lives of over 10 other Canadian soldiers. He was born in Norfolk, England. Gander was a Newfoundland dog posthumously awarded the Dickin Medal, the Animals Victoria Cross. In 2000, for his deeds in World War II, the first such award in over 50 years, he picked up a thrown Japanese hand grenade and rushed with it toward the enemy, dying in the ensuing explosion, but saving the lives of several wounded Canadian soldiers. Colonel Lance Newnam, Captain Douglas Fort, and Flight Lieutenant Hector Bertram Gray were awarded the George Cross for the gallantry they showed in resisting Japanese torture in the immediate aftermath of the battle. The men had been captured and were in the process of planning a major escape by British forces. Their plan was discovered, but they refused to disclose information under torture and were shot by firing squad. Commemoration. There was a cenotaph in Hong Kong. The cenotaph in Central commemorates the defense as well as war dead from the First World War. A shield in the colonial emblem of Hong Kong, granted in 1959, featured the battlement sign to commemorate the defense of Hong Kong during the Second World War. This coat of arms was in place until 1997, when it was replaced by the regional emblem. After the war, Lei Yu Mun Fort became a training ground for the British forces until 1987 when it was vacated. In view of its historical significance and unique architectural features, the former Urban Council decided in 1993 to conserve and develop the fort into the Hong Kong Museum of Coastal Defense. The Memorial Garden at Hong Kong City Hall commemorates those who died in Hong Kong during World War II. Now, we'll skip ahead and recite the poem 
in Flanders Fields. In Flanders Fields, the poppies blow between the crosses row on row. They mark our place and in the sky, the larks still bravely singing fly, scarce heard amid the guns below. We are the dead, short days ago, we lived, felt dawn, saw sunset glow, loved and were loved, and now we lie in Flanders Fields. Take up our quarrel with the foe, to you from failing hands we throw, the torch be yours to hold it high. If ye break faith with us who die, we shall not sleep, though poppies grow in Flanders Fields. Written by John McRae during the Battle of Second Ypres, 1915. Now we will toast to the fallen, of course, with the traditional grand buoy. Ladies and gentlemen, the king, the great white emperor, and the American constitution as well. They shall not grow old as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun and in the morning, we will remember them. This concludes today's speech.